Welcome back, everybody, to our second best out of three of the day and what should have been our final match of the winner's bracket round one. More on that in one moment's time, but this is a best out of three. Noah's Ark, also known as NA, a little bit more of a known Chinese team with some players who have had a little bit of experience. Mofi, as well as, I believe, Lee playing for World Elite in the past. So some players with some more name recognition, you might say. Facing off against Flash Esports, an up-and-coming team from Singapore who's been doing really well. They actually made it all the way to the Ghost League Asia Finals in the face-off against Arn. Shiva was casting that one. You gotta say, some very exciting matches there. I only got to catch part of one of the games, but I am LD of Dota Commentaries.com, joined here by Gods and Gods. Before we dive into this match, I think it's time to let the viewers know about what's happening tomorrow. Oh, uh, we've got a good news and bad news, well, depending on who you're a fan of, but uh, for the Dreams fans out there, to the Pinoy fans, unfortunately, the Dreams match against Fall Love has to be replayed. Uh, they were playing with a stand-in, standing from another team, Woots was playing, who's uh, in the Mineski roster, so as a result, the admins have decided the match will have to be replayed. The good news is, well, you get to see Jules try carry them again, so uh, <laughs> we'll have a best of three between between um, Dreams and Fall Love at 2.30 p.m. Singapore time, um, and that'll be before the round two matches tomorrow, which will be at the same time as usual, 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Singapore time. So uh, a bit of a hiccup there, but hopefully everything will be sorted. Dreams will be um, hopefully sporting their full correct roster tomorrow against 4Love, and we'll, we'll get to see them go again. You missed them on Saturday yesterday because of your wedding bit. I, I guess you've got to be pretty excited now. I actually I woke up early that morning. I was checking Facebook, checking Twitter, trying to find out what happened. I even got to watch the stream on my phone for a little bit before the wedding kicked off, and I was excited. I'm a big, I mean, obviously the P-Noise Jewels is a fan favorite, so they're going to be excited about that. But that is tomorrow's schedule, guys. We'll be starting at 2.30 a.m. EST, which is my time, for all the people from Southeast Asia, 2.30 p.m. SGT, and then for the Europeans, 8.30 a.m. So have your coffee, have your morning paper, and if, if anyone still reads newspapers nowadays, I don't know about that, but uh, you watch some Dota to wake things up. So anyway, we're back here, guys. Flash Esports versus Noah's Ark. And I got to say, this match out of the two today, Definitely a match I expected to be a better series than the last one. I think these two teams a little bit more experienced, and Flash has been in great form as of late. We haven't seen as much of NA in Dota 2. In fact, I haven't really seen them at all, but uh, it's a team that has some name recognition, some, some players who are a little more accomplished from the Chinese scene. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is not like MD, who even the, the Chinese commentators and, and team were saying, okay, I don't really know much about these guys with NA. They're a team who've been around. They've been competing competing in the Ace Dota League, the G1, the G League, both Dota 1 tournaments, but they get mixed results. They're not really a top team. They're normally sitting around the middle or slightly Whoa. above it, but they managed to get some draws against some accomplished teams. And here they are pulling out one from Ehome's book, the Wisps Tiny, right off the Bad. Okay, this is. I feel like this is one of the good ways of dealing with a TA. TA, probably one of the best solo heroes in the game, and so annoying to verse. Well, they've they've watched E Home. They've decided this works. Let's try it ourselves. Um, I I love Wisp Tiny. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited about this pick, but we almost never see it first, second pick like this. Normally, it comes at earliest second, third pick as your final two selections. Maybe you get the Tiny or the Wisp now, but getting them both, I suppose, once you pick one, your hand is kind of tipped. Honestly, they're not really banned that often. I feel they probably would have slipped through that second stage of bans. Unless Flash has played NA before, it's possible they've scrimmed. It's possible they know how they play. We don't know if these teams have practiced against each other. It's such a powerful combo, though. I mean, the Tether stun, the Orbs. Orbs, great for chewing through Refraction. As well as Tiny's Avalanche having four damage procs in Dota 2. Between those two, Refraction isn't going to do too much in the mid game. And, of course, you get your ultra-hard carry. Tiny with Wisp Supportium may be the hardest carry in the world of Dota. At least out of the heroes ported over so far. If he's not the hardest, he is damn close once he gets those items up. Yeah, it really is. And he's great against other, other carry heroes. That's the reason, reason I think some teams really started to pick him. is just because of how good Craggy exterior scales into the late game. Uh, and then, of course, the ability to just completely wipe apart bases in a matter of seconds. Flash Esports go with something also slightly unconventional. Disruptor support right off the bat. And that's almost purely to deal with that Wisp Tiny combo. The Glimpse uh, can send whoever Wisp brings into a fight right back to base, right back to where they come from. You can send back who Wisp brings along, then focus down the Wisp. Or vice versa. I mean, if it's a hero you can kill without the Wisp, maybe you focus them down. Um, so, in, yeah, interesting pick. Tidehunter, no surprises there. This is one of the strongest sort of support, sort of says teamfight heroes in the game now, with the way there's a much greater emphasis on grouping up and pushing, um, and also just sort of large, larger scale clashes now that there's no longer the strong emphasis on split pushing. 
Yeah, you and I have sort of theory crafted about this one. We saw it once before. It was a Riki Wisp in a Pinoy game. Uh, and a Disruptor was picked, I believe, to try and counter it. You know, you jump in with the Riki Wisp, you send one of them back, probably the Riki, and then just leave the Wisp there to basically get killed off, as you were discussing. It didn't work, though. You know, the one thing about Riki is he's got that cloud, so if he just jumps on you and clouds you immediately, you can't even use your abilities. It's kind of similar with Tiny, though. Toss, you know, either just a toss the Wisp in to chain up a Tether Stun, or you just start with your Avalanche and then follow up with the Tether. In theory, it sounds like an amazing way to counter them. In practice, I have not seen it work. That's not to say it can't. And also, it should be mentioned, yeah. Disruptor, still a fantastic support here. I feel still undervalued by a lot of teams. The one the one concern for him is going to be there's a lot of chain stun right now. And, well, Disruptor, pretty squishy, is going to have to mind his positioning. But good against these tower divers. You can punish their overaggression with a nice kinetic field, the static storm silence, and, of course, Glimpse. Chaos Knight the pick. And now we enter the second stage of the ban, yeah. so what do you expect to see out of these teams the rest of the way? Well, the CK pick is, well, it, it kind of, I guess, confusing, because they had the Wisp Tiny. I mean, how Tiny, if you're going to be playing him as that DPS carry hero, I mean, you don't really want to put him mid. You want him in that safe lane farming. So you've also got the CK, so this kind of hints that NA want to run some dual lanes, maybe a dual lane mid with a Chaos Knight and some range support, whether it's an Ancient Apparition, Alina, some strong support to combo with. The Wisp Tiny could always go bottom. Uh, if you really want, you can do Wisp Chaos Knight together with Tiny plus one somewhere else. Um, I I mean, Tiny, when he was first popular, was a solo mid hero. I just don't feel if you're using the Wisp Tiny combo that you want to play Tiny as a solo mid. Uh, that's where you more want to go for the bottle, the arcane boots, the blink dagger build. Mm. You know what I'm thinking we may see is just a pair of very powerful dual lanes. The Wisp Tiny, maybe a CK Lashrak, a CK Lena, and that's a good way to shut down Templar Assassin. At least limit her farm. You might not kill her. She is pretty difficult to bring down. The new Edict not as good for getting hero kills. This has got that cast animation to it in 6.75. But you can really limit her farm. Throw whoever you want on the offlane. Obviously, there's a lot of heroes available right now for that. The Windrunner, the Beastmaster, the Broodmother. Plenty of options. And if you can get your Tiny, that free farm on the top lane, your CK and uh, whatever support is with them, shut down the TA. I feel they could walk into the mid game with some very powerful chain stuns as well as burst damage. So... I don't know how else they would lane this. I guess you can throw a Wisp Tiny mid. It's not really that strong as a dual lane mid, though. Yeah, I, I don't see Wisp going that strong in a dual lane mid. I feel Wisp needs that safe lane. I can use some pulls if you want to get XP to get faster level 6. Um, it's just a much better lane for chasing as well, using that tether movement speed. You don't really have much room to chase when it's mid lane. Mid lane, you want the pure burst damage, which is your CK Lashrak, your CK Lina. Um, so we'll see maybe some bans on some of those strong supports. Rubik actually not picked up at all in the first the first stage, which is quite interesting uh, that neither team went for him, as uh, it does get banned out now by Flash, as well as a Venomancer. So Venomancer, an annoying hero diversity if you're a Templar Assassin, not like a super hard counter, but it is very kind of pesky and slowing you down as well as chipping away at that refract. So um, we'll see maybe a couple more supports being banned out, because NA with Tiny and CK have already pretty much established their sort of core heroes. They do still need maybe an offlane hero. Uh, Bounty Hunter, very popular in the Chinese scene. And look, plenty of offlane heroes left. I mean, Broodmother, Windrunner, all these heroes still in the pool. Oh, yeah. You know, plenty of offlane heroes. You know, what I'm curious to see now, is there any chance NA could fit a, and maybe an offlane Batrider into their lineup? I feel he's generally more effective in the safe lane or solo mid. And that's normally how we've seen the Chinese play him. I mean, traditionally, you'd see him in the offlane, but only when they anticipated a 1v1 matchup against something like a solo Windrunner. Uh, so I, it's just such a powerful counter to TA. And the reason I bring this up is that Orange were running Yamate's Batrider against Flash Esports in that Gosu Cup Asia Finals in at least the first game I saw. And it was really doing a lot of dirty work. So I don't know if it fits into their lineup, but that to me is even a better counter to TA if you can get the levels in farm. Might be tricky in this game. It's not, uh, it's not banned out for the moment, though. And they go ahead and ban out AM. Interesting. I, I, I don't really think this lineup would be too worried about an AM. Uh, with Tiny CK, yeah. it's a lot of lockdown and initiation to deal with him. Yeah, I mean, both with a lot of physical damage as you get to the late game uh, to, d to beat down an Antimage. Maybe just worried because he is such a great split pusher. Chaos Knight and Tiny not entirely mobile, but the Wisp kind of gives any hero mobility. But they will ban it out. Nature's Prophet, the final ban from Flash Esports. So those strong heroes that you can combo with Chaos Knight still in the pool. I mean, surprised to see Leshrac Lena not taking a hit here. As, uh, that, that's, that's where I imagine NA would be sort of t leaning towards with these last two picks, at least for one of them, um, and then getting some hero 
for that off lane. I mean, one more ban now. And, I mean, yeah, I guess Flash wants some kind of a carry, or at least semi-carry here. I mean, heroes like Queen of Paints on the pool can be quite strong. Um, Marana, we saw SQL use just in their best of three, where they we took down MD. Um, and, and they want something preferably ranged, I feel, as well, to deal with Tiny and CK. You want to be able to kite them around. Yeah, you definitely do. Uh, Invoker gets banned out. That would be one of the prime choices, I feel. Uh, he was banned in the first stage, but... Or no, actually the second. Sorry, I'm thinking of the old bands, but it would be a prime candidate to kind of deal with that. Something else that's available, which I don't know if Flash would pick it, but can be very potent against heroes like CK, like Tiny, is the Lone Druid. That entangle ability really messes up these melee heroes, and Lone Druid is tanky enough to withstand maybe not the full brunt of their offense, but at least an initial barrage once he gets level 6. If they did that, maybe you can throw him in the offlane, maybe the Tidehunter. It's something to think about. I'm not sure they would go for it. Generally, the Southeast Asian teams prefer a little bit, and the way the lineup's developing, it looks like more of an aggressive kind of gank-oriented lineup with the TA Disruptor tied. But it's something on the table. Brood as well. I think that's the other big offlane besides the Bounty Hunter, which is sitting out there. Yeah, um, we're going to see one more ban. I, I really, I'm surprised we haven't seen that much Bounty Hunter over the last week or two. I mean, it was like one of the most popular picks at the International, uh, just in that offlane, as there's very few heroes that can, very few tri strong jewel or trilands that can just completely destroy him. Even with Senshi, you can kind of win walk in and out of them. So interesting, interesting to see him sort of cut out of popularity. I think teams are just trying to sort of adjust to the new metagame with the with the update and the new patch, as well as just trying to try out some new strategies now that tournaments aren't as big. But this is the G1 League. We've got a lot of prize money at stake here. And just being able to qualify for it, even if Flash Esports say they qualify and they end up going into the main tournament where they don't win a match, it's still a big thing to say you got to compete there and you were one of those top 10 teams competing there. It's also great experience as well. You're getting to play yeah. against the best teams in the world. That is, you know, you want to be the best team? Well, you got to play and beat the best. Even if you don't beat them the first time, that's how you get better as a player. So I would love to see, I would love to see, you know, a, another sort of up and coming team qualify. And really either of these teams could be the up and coming teams, but there you go. It looks like a pair of dual lanes for us. The CK Lino probably heading mid, Tiny Wisp in the safe lane. Well, you know, sometimes you're lucky and sometimes you're good. And whatever you want to call, whatever you want to say, I guess I sort of called that one right. Now they still need that off later. I feel Bounty fits in perfectly with this lineup. Great chasing lineup already. Track gives you a little bit of extra chasing power. And they're built around killing heroes in the mid game. And, well, the best hero for that is going to be Bounty Hunter. You know, it's interesting you bring up Bounty Hunter Gods because it's not only that he was popular at the International and I think fairly successful there as well, not necessarily on the tier of a Morphling, but a decently successful hero. But in the new patch, you get more gold and more experience for hero kills. You'd think that yeah. would favor a hero that already rewards hero kills quite favorably. And it was pretty item independent in the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, and Lena also received a buff uh, with the ultimate having a much shorter cooldown. It seems Lena has ultimate almost in every single gank now. So I think about 30 seconds was cut off the cooldown on that level 1 ultimate. Flash, though, they pick up the two semi-carries. This is what I was sort of talking about. They don't want to go for a hard car carry or right-click here against Tiny's Craig X here. They get first to the Queen of Pain, then Tinker as well. Hmm. Um, problem is going to be how they lane this. Maybe a side lane, off lane solo Queen of Pain with Tinker in the safe lane Whoa. would be my best guess. And... Forget Bounty Hunter, they go with another Invis Hard to Kill Hero. It's going to be a Weaver. I guess a solo bottom Weaver, long lane Weaver. I mean, unless they want to run in the safe lane with sort of an aggressive dual lane. Uh, but I, I don't see that going too well for NA. So this is going to be uh, the resurgence of Weaver. Here that the Chinese sort of popularized in that side lane solo role. The main way they're going to kill Weaver is Glimpse. Glimpse into Kinetic Field is how they can kill him. Aside from that, they don't have Metal Lockdown. Until they get Hexes up on the Tinker or the Quap. Which is a long way off, uh, the Queen of Pain, I mean. Uh, but before no that... Disables? Yes, no disables? No stuns. disables, but a lot of burst damage. That's, I, I mean, I feel like maybe they can't lock him down with stuns, but there's so much burst damage. Queen of Pain and Tinker, I mean, this Weaver's going to have to sort of tank up. I mean, if Shikuchi, he goes in, he starts right-clicking, he can just get insta-popped almost. That's a great point. And, you know, Tinker... Uh, the thing about Weaver is he doesn't offer that much to your team if he doesn't get items. The Swarm is a pretty decent sort of utility spell. But he has to be in the middle of the fight to do damage. I mean, that's that's how you get most of your damage. It's coming out from Sakuchi, and to a lesser extent, the Gemini auto attacks, until you get some items up. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing him just tank up, like you're saying, maybe a Vitality Boost or a Hood. Maybe build it towards a pipe, because this team is probably going to need one. There's a lot of magical damage coming out from Flash. Looks like we need a quick pause. For anyone who's just tuning in, Flash was in some sort of a ruckus or a scuffle at the Land Cafe, which is why we had a bit of a delay here. Uh, hopefully there's no black eyes or broken hands or anything. 
our Dota players need to be in their top form. But uh, I wonder if that's flaring its, its ugly head now. Either way, I guess we could take this time to introduce the players. Uh, KS playing the Tinker, MLG handling the Disruptor, DSF on the Queen of Pain, Iwa going to be playing the TA, and Hang KYKY, not KYXY, but KYKY on the Tidehunter. Yeah, Hankiki used to play for Aeon, I believe it was, uh, back it was probably about five or six months ago, but no longer Aeon. I, I don't know if Aeon still exists. I think they have, I don't know if it's an official disbandment, but they no longer have a roster, so to speak. Well, I uh, Over on the die side? Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I, I, Ken, Ken joined, Ken left the team, right? Didn't he join MUFC? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, um, I, they might be disbanded. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, that's all right. Um, over on the Dire side, Team NA from China, we've got Air playing the Weaver. We've got Lee playing the... Sorry, Lee playing the Lena. Air playing the Weaver. Um, Mophie playing the Wisp. Pretty Whore playing the Chaos Knight. And then finally, XDD playing that Tiny for them. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they land this. I mean, I imagine CK Lena going mid, Tiny Wisp at top with the Weaver at bottom. Uh, but maybe they'll do something a bit different. You know, the thing about the thing about Lena CK is they're probably not going to kill TA, but what they can do is just keep her back and not really let her farm too much. They don't have any damage over time. They don't have multiple damage sources, so there's really no way to remove a fraction that quickly. Shut down the TA in the middle lane. She might not farm that well. Tinker's going to get free farm. Queen of Pain, probably not going to get much at all in the top lane. If these are the way they, they choose to lane it, it's not clear. DSF and Iwa fighting for mid, body block each other. Dropping a branch, maybe gonna do some warning. Just trolling the casters, uh, trying to confuse Weaver's us. Weaver's mid, apparently. This is uh, some new strategies coming out of NA. They're sending Weaver mid. It looks like CK is going bottom with the Lena. This is, this is interesting. I think this is this seems to be about the mind games. Maybe they're expecting Flash to do something different. Weaver, Weaver versus TA. And nobody's gonna die in this lane, I think. But unless there's some sort of gank coming in, I think they can both farm yeah. reasonably well. I think the advantage of putting Weaver that Weaver has better rune control. We will be able to get most of the runes. TA should outfarm the Weaver, but um, TA won't be able to just get every rune, use them to gank and dominate the map. Um, Weaver should get some farm, but it won't be it won't be quite the same as the TA. But yeah, it's it's interesting to see them do this. The bottom lane's going to struggle because that's going to be tri lane up against the dual lane CK Lena. Not to mention, I don't think they're going to let them really block this pool here. Uh, have they got sentry wards? They do have sentry wards, so they're just going to use these pools and out farm, maybe even get some kills if CK Lin aren't careful. So this bottom lane is really the one weak link for for uh, for NA. I feel the the downside to running it this way is if you get shut down bottom, that is two heroes getting shut down, and one who really needs to have a good start to have any momentum in the mid game in the CK. If you run the Weaver bottom and he has a bad time, it's only one hero who's struggling, and he's sort of got a utility anyway, just with the swarm. Oh, they might get a first blood though. Hen Kiki, he's got to be careful. CK is here. Lita is here, and there's no backup. They have to chain this one properly. There's your light striker ready to start it off. Cast Bolt is available to follow. Two seconds done. First blood claimed by NA. A little bit of lag. I didn't get the death notification. Queen of Pain dropping low. Top lane. DSF taking a lot of damage. Very low. One more auto attack from Mophie, but the salve to keep him alive. Beautiful salve timing. So first blood going their way. And then Flash able to hang on and not give up too. Well, fantastic stuff, NA. Not only his first blood, but forcing Queen of Pain to chew through pretty much all her rejamming. Wasting the salve is already low on HP. You're going to have to eat up all those tangos. And that was some really smart gank by the CK Lena there. I love how Lena does the first stun. CK stun has a, has a, was much more important and it's some short land. But if Lena can get the stun on, you can always get a second stun because of the short cooldown. So nice to see them leave with that. And it was some smart play. As now this bottom lane, I mean, getting a... First blood on the tri lane, essentially. Um, they weren't actually in the laning stage quite yet, which is why they managed to get it. It's a big, big pickup, and that's really going to help out this CK linear at bottom. You know, Flash seems a little disoriented. Disruptor rotated over mid. I'm not sure what he's planning to accomplish here. You're not going to be able to kill a Weaver as a level 1 Disruptor. You don't have any kind of uh, crowd control to deal with that. Weaver, even if you do match Kinetic Field, well, speaking of Kinetic Field, it's Lee. There's your Light Striker right. Rockets flashing through. They need to get a Chaos Bolt, but it's too late. Not going to be in time. Chaos Knight, it has hit level 2. He is going to have Reality Rift, so a quick counter kill. And this is more how we expected the bottom lane to go, is a yep. tri lane with a Disruptor and a Tide Hunter, And the burst damage from Tinker, very strong against that squishy Lena. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this Lena should be food more or less at the bottom lane. CK is going to be a lot harder to kill, especially because of that first blood. He's got boots out shield right off the bat. 
And uh, he's going to be looking pretty good here. But the, the good news is for NA is like they're doing okay at the top lane, especially Queen of Pain being sort of zoned away as much as possible from the lane, although it will push out now. And we'll have to see how Weaver does mid. Weaver actually doing some, uh, well, bottle crowing. I mean, it's no longer oh, actually up there. Oh, Chaos Knight gets picked oh, off oh, bottom oh. by the rocket. Oh, my. That's, that's not something they can't really afford to keep giving away kills at this bottom lane. And it's going to really spiral out of control, I feel, if they're, they're not careful. Uh-oh. Uh oh this is what we missed in the middle lane, or what I missed anyway earlier. Disruptor came over to drop the Sentry Ward. Didn't see it because there's so many creeps and heroes there, but this is really going to make life hard for Weaver. You can run in with the Sakuchi and try and farm, but as long as Tia is vision of you, she can, if she hits you with that <laughs> refraction, it really hurts. Weaver is one of the squishiest heroes in the game. Wrap around top from Mophie, probably just going to do some harassment. DSF is going to back off. Now they trade hits. Wisp cannot trade auto attacks very favorably because she has zero base armor. And there's the Shadow Strike. Tiny might be forced to come help with this. Wisp is taking a lot of harassment. No, she'll be okay. Pop those orbs. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Cast Knight dropping low. Only level two, and it's going to be forced to salve. Pretty big win there. 100 gold economic loss, even though he survives. Not farming. Not having a good time, and what looked like a pretty bad start has now been completely turned around. Level 4 on Tinker, level 4 on Disruptor, and 2 on the Tide. Meanwhile, both of these dual lane heroes, only level 2, and mid lane, the blows continue to be traded. It really feels like Weaver is having an awful time. Yeah, I mean, he's being very very convincingly out-farmed here, and I mean, that's, I guess what you'd expect from this 1v1 matchup at mid. Uh, Weaver's going to try and maybe control some of these runes soon, but it's it's two lanes that NA aren't doing too well in now, both mid and the bottom lane, and bottom lane, probably not going to improve all too much here. Oh, Tide's going to do maybe a bit of pulling, and oh wow, they found Queen of Pain again. Queen of Pain will blink out, but NA just looking to put as much pressure as possible on this Queen of Pain. This is the off lane here for Flash, the one lane which shouldn't do well, and I mean, hitting up almost level four so far. Oh, they're going to go on this as well, and then, oh, she blinks out just in time. I think they could have even dove that next tower but maybe not quite expect it, and she will escape in the end. The downside of this dual lane is even when you drive Queen of Pain off, they don't have that much push power at this stage of the game, so they can't really punish the fact that she's being zoned out of the lane as much as you might like. But they are getting some decent levels in farm, level 3 on Wisp. I would maybe just like to see a little bit more pulling. Now that Tiny's already got 700 gold, could buy that bottle, have some decent regen in lane. The Weaver is feeling like a real liability. They gave him solo mid to try and control runes, but he's being driven back to base, and it was all started just by a single sentry ward. We have TA with a DD rune up, already hitting 5, and Weaver is a hero. When you go mid with a bottle, you should be able to get pretty much every rune, unless you're up against the Queen of Pain or something. But when you get zoned out, it's too dangerous to check those runes, and, well, TA picks one up. Yeah, I mean, Flash Esports playing this really smart. I mean, you mentioned that sentry ward earlier. It's really helped his TA win this mid lane more than he would have otherwise, and as a result, and they, they're definitely on the back foot here. I mean, Tiny at this top lane, he's got his boots up. He's going to go for a bottle here, so not go straight for the phase boots, the drum, the yash, or these sort of attack speed items. He will get a bottle to do some nuking damage and help maybe look for some more aggression on the Queen of Pain at top. <laughs> I love him just throwing the Wisp around like a ball of yarn. Bottom lane, though, it's action breaking out as Lina drops. Now Cast Knight trapped by the kinetic field. Should be a double kill. Laser, laser cooling down. Oh, he's living it! Does he have any regen? He doesn't. He runs back into Disruptor. That'll be a kill. Tide tanking the tower. No, it's Tinker now, but Disruptor is caught between a tower and a creep wave, and he probably will go down to this. One more tower shot. There you go. They do get the counter kill, but it goes to the Dire, and nobody is there to collect experience. Disaster in the bottom lane. Struggles in the mid lane, and not getting enough up top. So far, Flash really doing a great job here in the early stages of this game after a rocky start. Dyer's bottom tower is yeah, I, it, it was a bit of a rocky start, but now they've turned things around. I mean, that was even with the first blood, they're still dominating these lanes. So Mysterious. think how things would be otherwise. And Weaver's found the haste ring. He's going to try and make his way down bottom to try and get some kills on some of these squishier heroes. Tinker with a soaring up, trying to spam that much. Here we go. Weaver gets spotted out, and they're going to go on Tinker. It looks like he will go down, and that's going to be a nice little pickup here for Grenade. I kind of thought they could have turned two there, but just opting to go for the safe kill. Uh, certainly not a bad play. And they do slow down the Tinker, who's already up to 750 gold, and it's soaring in boots. That's going to delay the boots of trail by at least a minute or two. Very important kill. But when you leave that bottom lane alone, that means time for the TA with this DD rune to do a lot of work on the tower. Tower now down to only 300 HP. Air TP's back mid. There aren't any more Sentry Wards. Oh god, if two refractions hit you. Well, one hit! Can he pull a Ferrari? No, he's not going to be able to do so. And meanwhile, Tiny up top in a lot of trouble. Wisp drops low. Double kill for the off lane Queen of Pain. Oh my goodness, that is a third lane you could argue has basically just been lost. 
Really bad start for NA. Not looking good for them at all. It should be mentioned, though, in the mid-game, they have a great ganking, great kind of hero-killing lineup. And Flash, the team fight, very dependent on this Tide getting six. Aside from that, lacking lockdown. So they're not out of this yet, but it's not the start NA was hoping for. Yeah, it really isn't. I mean, they've, they've got the heroes who can sort of do well in the mid-game. I mean, when they get the Wizards to level six, they can maybe start roaming around using that relocate. Look for as many gank skills as they can. But it's not going to be easy. I mean, this TA is going to be getting a pretty fast Blink Dagger up at this rate. Um, and then you've got Tinker, who's got his boots, Sol Ring, uh, 1,200 gold. There's going to be boots to travel. There's going to be backup. So NA are going to have to play this smart, uh, not get, make sure they're not getting too heavily counter ganked when they go for those kills with the Wisp plus one. Toss in. Just a little harassment here in the middle lane. Lee is checking the bottom rune. He is spotted. The Radiant could maybe look to just kill him. Rune is going to spawn top. Air will happily say, pick that one up. Finally, he gets something. It's a DD rune. Although TA basically has built in uh, innate DD, and in fact is going to charge into air. There's your tether. Tether into uh, Sakuchi. Pretty decent combo on paper anyway. There's your Sakuchi, but the tether gets broken. The downside is that the Weaver, oh, he's going to get out. Oh, he just lives with the one. Barely surviving. Pretty hard just running out of the kinetic field. When they rotate mid to try and deal with this TA, this does mean that the Chaos Knight really struggles on the bottom lane. And then as well, the Tiny starts having to use up a lot of regen. All the bottle charge is expelled, and the Queen of Pain gets more aggressive. That's sort of the downside to having a bad start against Flash's lineup, is they have so many heroes, you can't really be dealt with 1v1. The TA, the Queen of Pain especially, and even Taker to some extent with the March. And right now they're just struggling to sort of, you know, trying to plug up all the holes in the dike, but they don't have enough fingers at the moment. Yeah, they don't. They need to need to grow a few more, but it's going to be even worse now if Lina gets picked up. I mean, Tia's looking to be aggressive. Tia's actually going to get a T1 tower, um, possibly. They're looking for a deny, maybe, but Tia just so much refract damage. Um, oh. NA, I mean, the problem's surmounting. Great, great tower kill there with two heroes as well. If the stun hits, maybe they can set that one up. Bottom lane, the push continuing. They're going to get two towers very quickly. March Machine's cooling down in one second. This will be Boots of Travel for the Tinker. Ten minutes into the game, that's your Boots of Travel's up. Dive on the middle lane. DSF picking off the Lina. Now looking to go into Weaver, although pretty low at that. Probably can't get the kill. Air Sakuchi very aggressively after DSF. The tower under siege. Tower should fall momentarily. Weaver still chasing. Desperately wants this kill, but it's going to be very hard to catch DSF. Blink, great way to do it, Sakuchi. Screams on in. Has the ult. Meld going to be dodged by Sakuchi just barely. The tower falls bottom. That's the Tinker Boots of Travel. Ten minutes in, your Tinker's got a Boots of Travel. Your Tide is almost level 6. Your Disruptor is level 6. He's got his Arcane Boots if he wants to build them. You've shut down the Weaver. The Tiny's had some struggles. DSF already is level 8 with his Power Treads. TA's got the Blink. It's really commanding position right now for Flash. Yeah, and those quick towers really just started the snowball effect where now now NA have to play so cautiously, maybe even have to group up. Queen of Pain's going to find another kill. Flash are just diving towers left, right, and center. Linear bottom will go down. Two more kills, and with Tiny trying to turn things around here, they've TP'd in. They're actually going to get themselves a couple kills here. This is what NA needs to do more of. They need to get this next kill on Disrupted. They're going to get it, and now NA will go back. Well, Whisk goes back, leaves the Tiny at bottom lane, probably wants to maybe go back and keep farming, but they they catch Flash being a bit too aggressive, sort of overextending there, and that's kind of what NA are going to need here. Yeah, while this was happening, the Chaos Knight actually did... Queen of Pain got a kill mid, then she got picked off, so there was also a one-for-one -one trade in that lane. And trading kills is going to be pretty effective for Flash at this, or uh, for MA rather at this point, because they're behind in terms of experience by a pretty significant margin, over 3,000, which is a lot at this stage of the game. Quite a level disparity. If we actually look at the level difference, nine on the TA and the Queen of Pain, the two solo heroes, the free farm taker level eight, and then the two solos for the Dyer, quite far behind. Level eight on the Weaver, uh, or not not the two solos, but the solo mid Weaver, as well as the farming CK only level seven. And then the supports really struggle, especially this Lina. No boots, trying desperately to farm those up. Tide's wrapping around top. They want to set up a kill on Tiny, and this should be a pretty easy kill with we'll Tinker TP'ing in. The trap is set, the net will close, and there, there's, there's the Kinetic Field and the Queen of Pain ult, but the Avalanche Toss combo wants to turn this one around and get something for his troubles. Triple TP in top. KS, the March of Machines is murdering them. Oh, those are very nasty machines. Someone gets glimpsed back. Right after they TP and Chaos Knight is helpless to deal with this fight. Ravage just for the Weaver. Is there going to be a scream? Cooling down. Blink on in from the TA. That's a melt. And this Disruptor doing so much work right now. And Flash just using their item advantage. So slight at this stage of the game, you might say. But 
really choosing the right moment to fight there. Massive team fight victory. Huge spike in the gold. Huge spike in the experience. Now they're going to get the final tier one. And I'd love to see some aggressive wards for Flash. They are in full control of this game. Yeah, this disruptor pick is just paying off for them. I mean, these glimpses have been really crucial. Teleporting back heroes who have just TP'd in. You're going to see it happening with the Wisp relocate as well. And uh, right now, NA in all sorts of trouble. I mean, they're only behind by five kills, but it's a massive deficit with tower ta after tower dropping. A big farm difference as well with TA and Tinker just leading the way. Especially with this Templar Essence. KS is going to get picked off, but look how low they dropped to the march. Oh my Ooh. goodness, that was one wave of march. If there were two, that's probably a double kill for him. Was actually trying to cast the second when he got killed off there. Just insane that this, even the CK can barely stand against the march machines at this point in the game. Yeah, I mean, he's meant to be the tanky one, but he's just not really happening. March machines just ridiculous when it's maxed out. Um, they haven't really done too much ancient stacking here. They've decided it hasn't been needed. As TA tied, they want to maybe go for some more kills at mid lane, just sort of poking around. Uh, but they're going to find Lena coming in from the side soon. I love the aggressive wards. When you're winning, when you have the advantage, you have these aggressive heroes like the TA. Ty gets pulled back in, though. This could be trouble. The stun immediately removed by Kraken. Oh, a little bit unfortunate there. Now TA thinks about going in, tied on the high ground, gonna get picked off, not gonna be able to drop that Ravage. And that's a nice little solo kill. I don't think Flash wants to fight this without the Ravage. Maybe they do though. Glimpse not being used just yet. CK sitting back. Uh, and are they gonna go in? Weaver just in a little bit of trouble. Static Storm gets dropped, but Tiny just waltzes on through. Drive by action from him. Wisp ults in, possibly to her own doom. A uh, no gonna be. Killed off too quickly there. Queen of Pain going down. Wisp actually surviving through this. Uh, walk back to the tower. <laughs> now it's gonna Wisp back like two feet. Not much of an ult. Toss into the tower. What a play by XDD. Then the stun. A tanker not involved in this fight. The march finally showing up, but I really think they need that march damage. Rockets flash through, looking to get some kills. Flash overextending without that ravage. The fight just does not go the way they hope. But they're gonna get the Lita. There's a good glimpse. Lee is dead. 15 to 12. Kills being traded back and forth. Pretty, a little bit of a sloppy play there from Flash, but they come out all right in, in spite of that. Yeah, a bit of a sloppy play there. I don't think they needed to take that, take that fight so aggressively so far into enemy territory. I mean, that's the thing. We can't. It's not as easy to get as maximize the damage you're doing with that march when you're sort of diving and being super aggressive. And you can see there, uh, they kind of want to wait for the, the CK, the Wisp, the Tiny to come into them, walk into the march, walk into that Ravage. And when they go diving, that's where... NA can sort of really strike and cause some damage, and, and the last two team fights have gone alright for NA. There's a tiny little dip, or maybe at least just a, a flattening out of the gold graph, which shows that for the last sort of couple of minutes, NA have stabilized a bit. It should be mentioned that on paper, Tiny Wisp is a great way to deal with any kind of global combo. Tiny TP's in mid, surprised he wasn't instantly glimpsed back. That's normally one of the powers uh, of having a hero like Disruptor, is you can just punish those TP's. We saw it earlier top, but no big deal, they're just going to back off now. And they still have that Ravage Dwarf with smoke up on the Tidehunter. I wouldn't mind seeing them use this one right now. Tiny Taker actually went for a Blink Dagger. That's going to make the Tiny Wisp combo a little bit harder to actually pick him off. You can TP in, shift to your Blink, and immediately jump back. Or you can just Blink if you ever see that Wisp Bolt coming. And here comes that Wisp Bolt. Speaking of which, got a Blink right now. Will they be able to get him? The auto attack, the March damage. Trying to gank this Tinker is like trying to... Stick your head inside the jaws of an alligator, just bound to be bloody and painful, and Wisp will go down for that. Now the dive comes mid, and Kiki really wants this one. Remember, they do have Ravage Glimpse back in, Kinetic Field a little bit late there, not comboing properly, and that's going to force the back, but Tinker comes in. It was all just a distraction for KS, who is man-moding. Four seconds done, still fighting in the march, and they are probably going to pay for this. Quapol hits too. Double kill, four heroes dead, oh, instant nice. assassination, Flash just really outclassing NA here in game number one. Oh, absolutely, I mean the Tinker's mobility with the blink and well, blink for the moment and the four staff coming soon is just going to really start doing more and more damage. He do does go down that fight, but now they still, they just want to keep on fighting Flash. I mean they got the tide ravage, so why not? Uh, even with Lena respawning, I think they're still feeling pretty confident here. <laughs> it's amazing that they've been getting these kills without a Tide Ravage. Normally, you look at this lineup, they don't have any stuns. They're up against CK, they're up against Weaver, they're up against Tiny Wisp. A lot of mobility and you know, scary heroes to teamfight against because of the chain stunning. Plus, Lena's got some decent AoE, some decent burst. 
But they're winning these fights without the Rabbit. I think it comes down to superior play, as well as just that, oh, and TA blinks away bottom. They wanted to go on her. Prophet's gonna, or Tinker, rather, is gonna TP in, perhaps to his own demise. No, the Wisp, the Wisp is too easily killed, and that really is hurting the combo. Without that Wisp there to provide the move speed, to provide the orb damage, it's just not enough. And NA, just four heroes bottom, but being zoned out and driven back by two. Now they want to die, but again, fighting in the march. Tinker is just absolutely running circles around them. While this happens, TA jumps in, wants to get a couple kills, may pay for this, however, with the bugs on her. She will go down, three heroes pressuring top, kind of ignoring this fight. <laughs> oh, Tiny gets sniped bottom. Uh, just a sensational play from KS right now. For me, his Tinker is definitely the MVP of this game. Yeah, Tinker is just, I mean, turning these ganks, these TPs around. I mean, with Tiny coming, with CK comes in, he pops some march, he blinks around, he does the damage, he kills off the Wisp, and he, he doesn't, he, he doesn't go down most of these fights. He's really just dishing out damage with great hero control and flash and making making stuff happen, applying pressure all over the map. I mean, tier two tower at top, Tinker's free farming mid, and uh, the, it's going to get even worse as every talent drops for NA. Oh, NA really needs to make it. He's got a dag on. He can solo kill almost anyone oh. on the map with this one if he can land it at the right time. And he's got the soul ring, so he can support this pretty well. In fact. I love this choice, because the Wisp is already so easy to kill. Now it's impossible for her to enter a fight, unless that Tinker is off the board. Yeah, I mean, these heroes are going to be looking pretty squishy here. Weaver, Wisp, uh, Lena, those three are just really, really easy kills for this Tinker. And I like the Dagon build. I mean, I thought I was going to go for a four stuff with that, but I'm thinking this Dagon here can really pay that. off with getting kill after kill. <laughs> Air just sent back to base. Tail between his legs. It's not much of a tail. It's kind of a stubby little thing. But just a Dagon and a laser, and he's gone. Uh, as well as the rockets available there. They're going to tether up. Maybe they'll look to go top, but they cannot fight into bottom. They've really got to stop trying to fight against this Tinker without having some sort of serious numbers advantage. Because every time they do... Okay, he TPs out. The tower will drop. Maybe hoping to run into the TA in the woods. This could be almost perfect. The tether, both heroes wrap around the tree. Kind of the wrong direction. Tether stun to start. Chaos Knight stun to follow. Queen of Pain blinks it with the DD. And the glow. Oh, TA goes in biz. Sakuchi just barely missing him. Did not manage to catch him. Can be used to hit that TA. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Now Taker shows up. Wants to find some more kills. Stunned by the tether. This is how you got to deal with him. Catch him out of position. Don't lose that wisp. That wisp goes down. Air on the hunt. Taker's got the blink. He could blink away, but he also has dust, and you can't even rearm your dust. Nice little cheesy thing you can do. Oh, he drops low on mana, low on HP as well. Now the bugs come out. This will be a very important kill to pick up, and you cannot blink because of the bugs. One more auto attack. There's a much needed kill for air. Meanwhile, on the top side of the map, Tiny picks up a double. There's a gem on the floor. I don't know if he saw it because he left it there in the fog of war, and air still going to work, still trying to make things happen on this bottom lane. Scores now 24 to 18. Just ridiculous action. I feel like I'm watching a game of Pinoy Dota right now. Absolutely. Non-stop aggression. I mean, I love this this aggressive lineup that NA have concocted. I mean, it's gone really poorly from the start, but they're, they're showing they can still get these kills. And oh. then, I think that's it's a bit of a warning for Flash. They need to be careful because NA do still have a bit of a bite. They really do. And the thing about their heroes, aside from the Weaver, who really needs items to be effective in the mid game, Tiny, one of the few carries that needs very few items to really do damage. Even with phase boots, drums, he hits quite hard. And, you know, for CK, things like drums, VKB, relatively cheap items, even armlet or hood, can really make a difference on him. So you're right, I, they've got to be careful not to overextend because the, the flash lineup is very far ahead, but they're up against heroes that don't need that much to get going. Yeah, they really are. And now we're going to see Flash pop into that Roshan pit. They want to get this Aegis with all the aggressive a aggressive kills going on and all this aggressive player there. It's having an Aegis on their side will just give them that little thing. That 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 difference, that way they can just sort of go over the top, maybe go up tier 3, ta go for some tier 3 towers, fight in the enemy base, try to get themselves a Raxian. I, I guess they went on the TA even with this BKB up. Um, this BKB is really going to help out the TA and... Here we go, TA, TA with the Aegis as well as BKB now, so I think now's the time where Flash really going to up the heat. Yeah, Mech on the Disruptor, Blink on the Tide, maybe wait for the Lincolns on the Queen of Pain, but aside from that, I don't see much of a reason to halt. They also have a gem up on the Tinker, who continues to just Blink forward, progressively muscling his way into this lane, slowly but surely, methodically, just pushing that bottom lane in. Hang Kiki, kind of having some fun here in the trees. Pump faking. Tidehunter doing a little bit of a dance for the crowd. Disruptor just standing there, confused and turning his back to that tide.
does not like that dance, is not a fan of fun, that disruptor. That's why he sends you back to base, to make you very sad. So that you can't have fun either. Oh well, here we go mid, DSF. No late kids, they're not going to wait for it. It's a, pr it's a pretty decent item to pick up against CK. Kind of thought they would wait for it, but they can look to breach the high ground. As you mentioned, BKB up on TA. They're going to back off. Instead, they rotate top, but XDD is there. Maybe to get... Oh, they could glimpse him into the kinetic field. Not doing so just yet. And there's the gush. Hitting the tiny, driving it back. Mech gets popped. Bugs fly forward. Stun onto the TA. For the moment, taking some decent damage. The refraction being chewed through. Here comes the march, though. And I think that means that NA can no longer defend this one very easily. Chaos going to head set back to base, but only for a moment. Notice that they got a very crucial ward into the enemy base. They can spot every step that NA makes. And any type of aggression here could be a total disaster, in fact. If NA look to get aggressive, they're probably going to get wiped with this ward spotting all their movements. And a, in yeah. fact, here comes Tide. Blinks in, and then runs away. Pull back in. Quad bolt only onto Tiny, but Lena is already dead to the tanker. BKB popped by TA. Diving for this one. Quad blinks in as well. Wants to go on CK. There's your Dagon. Double kill for the tanker. Where the hell is that tanker? He is hoping it out of the base. Air just trying to catch someone, but he's getting outmaneuvered. Not something you expect to hear very often about a Weaver with that spammable haste rune, but in fact he's doing it and Tinker is still running. What a toss <laughs> from long range! XDD jams it in! They kick up a kill, but they may have paid they may pay for this one. Overextension perhaps. Ravage is gonna connect. Beautiful Ravage. Wisp will go down. It's four seconds stun. Onto the TA. Will it be enough? Glimpse back in is XDD and he is gonna pay for this one. Revenge for Tinker. Air still giving chase. The bug's doing good damage. The gem, it's no longer here because Tinker went down, so they don't have vision of this Weaver. In fact, everyone's dropping low. Pretty Haw, probably going to be the next one to fall. Can air find anyone else? Nice two hero light strike array. Now, MLG, this is the hero they want to pick off next. Air just cleaning up, doing a great job of holding on to this game for his team. But Lee will probably pay for this. Stun is hit. Queen of Pain buys the Lincoln Sphere. In the midst of all this, two auto attacks, blinking forward, arriving before his auto attack does. And Iwa one ups there with the triple kill. Now Iwa on the run. The bug doing great damage. Refraction cooling down in just a second. Gets it off just in time. Oh, so aggravating. And you can slowly burn through those refraction charges, but not going to be enough. Air's going to back off. Out, absolutely. <laughs> just chaos. Oh, God, I need chaos. My breath after that. I imagine you do as well. I mean, that was quite something. I mean, both teams just giving it their all. The Weaver, as soon as the gem was down, he's suddenly doing work. And this is a Weaver with minimal items, but just the new swarm doing a slightly, slightly more with the damage stick, having a couple braces, having that survivability. I mean, he cleaned up and he cleaned out well there. TA, same thing. Somehow surviving through all of that. And I mean. What a big fight. I mean, it doesn't really go either team's way. It, Here they go. Everything's been done, but... Oh, no. Wisp Tiny. They're on. The glimpse. Is it going to send someone back? He sends Tiny back, and Wisp is now somewhat alone at mid lane. But no, he's got backup, and this is going to be a fight that Tinker does not want to take. Maybe it is. As Tiny blinks forward, Tink. Chaos just constantly zapping people with that taser. Don't tase me, bro, they say. Chaos says, hell yes, I will. Gonna blink it again. One more Dagon. And the laser driving everyone home. Then Coop is gonna assassinate him. Oh, overkill. Can you say overkill? But they do get the kill, so perhaps it's not three heroes now dead. This is the counter that you talked about. Just TP in with the Wisp and then immediately glimpse that hero back. And now Wisp is suddenly in the wrong neighborhood. Oh yeah, and now they're gonna look to sort of take this a bit further, go a bit further up. They've got plenty of sentinels on this Tinker. They're just gonna go diving all the way right in here. They're not worried about anything. They take out the Chaos Knight. They've taken out three here. And I don't think Weaver can really afford to go in here. All these sentry wards up on the Tinker. He's making sure that Weaver just cannot uh, Sukuchi in and out. And with that, I mean, there's not really any way to defend this without the Tiny, without the Chaos Knight up. Not a fun game to be this Lena. That I can say for sure. Literally dies to three spells from any combination of heroes. And there are so many Blink Daggers on the TA. Blink on the Queen of Pain. Blink Dagger on the Tanker as well. Plus the Tide for good measure. And of course, Glimpse to spot you and pull you in from pretty much your fountain. Not a fun game for the Selena. They're probably going to get the racks, the marching machines, clearing out that creep wave. And in fact, the hero's trying to fight within it, but Tiny can't really get in here as quickly as he would like. Glimpse, Avalanche going to whiff, no glimpse just yet. Kind of biding his time on that one, but does have the static surf he needs. The Queen of Pain jumps back in, 
Remember, she does a blink, and so not an easy here to pick off. Weaver, Dustin, is going to pull himself back into this fight using that time lapse. Beautiful timing, but the static storm annihilating everyone. Now the Wisp in a lot of trouble. Tinker finally joining the fight. Blink's on in. Zaps one once more. Will not find it. In fact, Queen of Pain may pay for this. Just an absolute tower dive, base dive. They are just feasting on these NA supports. 41 to 23 and 27 minutes. Air is next in line. Disruptor gonna clean that up. Now TA dies the fountain. Gotta complete that team wipe. There you go. Double kill. Wicked sick for Ewa. And I think we are seeing why Flash Esports is quickly becoming one of the most feared teams in the Southeast Asian scene. One of the most feared, one of the most entertaining. I mean, this is kind of like a Mushius type of play with some of the Queen of Pain, the TA. They're just so aggressive and just playing so, so deep into the enemy territory. And this is just executing to perfection. We see it there, just one by one. Uh, and here is they're just all falling down to this aggression and flash now with the mid racks is they're chipping away at top I don't think they're gonna get it this time in but they can easily back off um, Wait to sort of regroup heal up get their ultimates back online the disruptor as well as the tidehunter ravage are on cooldown But and a I this is gonna be tough to come back I mean they've got some heroes just getting cheap tanky cost-effective items They can maybe win the next fight or two but in the long term. It's uh, it's not looking good well, as though they didn't have the burst damage, they're going to pick up a tag on, on the Disruptor as well. Just insane. Just, uh, even the Tiny, I feel, could just instantly be killed off from full HP if they land all the yeah. nukes on him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No one is safe, and uh, maybe they're going to wait for even Roshan to respawn if they want to play this as safe as possible. But I I mean, based on the last few fights with how, how aggressive they're being, they're going to just go for another for another fight. And Evo, they decide to make something happen. I like this decision. They're just saying, okay, we can't just sit back, wait to go down. Let's at least try. Let's smoke up. Go for that complexity smoke gag. Unfortunately, they're sort of heading the wrong way. The entire Flash Esports team are at the top lane, and that's where NA need to go, and they're heading to the enemy jungle, the complete opposite direction. And some of these heroes don't even have TPs. I remember, when they TP back, Disruptor can instantly glimpse one of them away, so they could end up yep. in a very bad situation here in a moment or two. Oh no. This could. This is looking like they're just going to lose Rex for free. There's no glyph. By the time they even get back, this first TP in, someone's going to be glimpsed back, and then you're looking at a very bad fight. Weaver runs in. Glimpse onto the tiny, sent back to the middle of nowhere, and meanwhile the Rex is going to drop anyway. Finally, Wisp is going to join the fight. It with the CK, instantly killed. Now they want to kill off Wisp. CK and Wisp, no, turns around to kill the bugs. A little A clicking the ground from most things. Then goes back for Mophi, but Mophi is going to get away thanks to the ult. Doesn't matter. TA diving the base, trying to kill off air. Kinetic field, glimpse on cooldown. KS just trained. Trolling their way through, this train can't be stopped. Triple kill for Chaos with that Diagon level 4. Too much burst damage. And then the pause from NA as they call GG at the end of an absolutely insane game. Uh, absolutely insane indeed. I mean, I, my math's probably not too good this late at night, but that's a lot of kills in 30 minutes. 30 minutes uh, tied with a blink <laughs> ravage just for the width, just for good meta, measure. A celebratory ravage and NA. Um, this is not what they were expecting. This is not what they thought they were in for. They thought this was going to be, okay, this is Flash Esports. I don't know who these guys are. We're a Chinese team. We're some of the best O teams in the world. We'll easily qualify, but Flash Esports absolutely rolled through them here in game number one. It's brutal. You, you mentioned Orange, and I think that's a great example. It's you know, a team which is, at times, just absolutely mind-bogglingly powerful. You know, solo kills coming out from here and just individual skill. The tanker performance very impressive. But it was a team effort. I mean, Flash made all the right decisions with items. They chose that that big timing fight top, where they just had gotten the blink up on the TA. Tinker just had his boots of travel. That was when this game went from difficult to virtually unwinnable for NA. So as, as exciting as the rest of the game was, you got to credit Flash for understanding when they had an advantage and capitalizing on it immediately. Yeah, I mean, they really, once they got ahead, once they felt they had those core items, they looked to keep applying the pressure. Uh, they they drafted and just made made their lane smart. They weren't really losing any of these lanes. Um, the top lane, Queen of Pain, well, not often you see those those hard lane solo Queen of Pains. I mean, you see a bit of it with some of the Pinoy teams in Dota 1, but it worked out well. It managed to stay alive, get some farm, and it's it was just a great team effort from Flash. Absolutely. Guys, this is game number one of Flash versus NA. Whoever wins this game moves on to the second round of the winner's bracket for the G1 Dota League qualifiers. And if they, whoever wins this game, if they win 
one more match, then they will be moving on into the main tournament. So a lot at stake here. Over $50,000 in prize money. Quite a substantial prize pool in that main event. But it's only game one. We'll be heading into game two soon. But for now, that's going to wrap it up for this cast. I am LD of DotaCommentaries.com. Joining me, of course, is Gods of GhostUGamers.net. And we'll be coming to back to you guys in a few moments' time with game number two of NA, also known as Noah's Ark from China, facing off against Flash, the Singaporean.